I'm literally now in someone else's garden. Hello, thank you for joining me. You can see where I am. I'm at Twyford. Today we're going to do another episode of Branchline Britain. We're going to do the Henley Branch, as the sign shows. That way is looking towards Reading and West Country, and that way it's looking towards London. The Henley Branch platform's down the other end of the platform, so we'll go and have a look at that in a minute. We're starting down here because this, believe it or not, this station used to be the western terminus of the Great Western Main Line back in 1839 and then 1840 the line was extended to Reading and Twyford, the, the village of Twyford was the nearest railway station to Henley on Thames although Henley on Thames is on the other side of the River Thames as we'll find out later. So the town of Henley on Thames seemed a very obvious place to build a branch line to, quite a fashionable town and the people of Henley on Thames you know wanted to be put onto the railway map. So what happened was the Great Western Railway obviously wanted to build the railway and in 1846 they put forward a bill to Parliament, but Parliament rejected the bill. So they tried again a year later, in 1847, this time the bill was accepted, but nothing happened with the construction of the railway. The Great Western Railway didn't have a lot of spare funds, this was due to railway mania building so many other lines, um, they just sort of didn't have the spare funds really to build this little line, even though it was something they wanted to do. So what happened was the people of Henley began to get a bit sceptical as to whether they would ever get this railway. So they held a meeting in 1852 and they agreed that they would put forward £15,000 towards the building of the railway. And eventually construction started and the line opened in 1857. So we're going to walk up there now and walk through the station and have a look at the branch platform. Obviously this would have all been broad gauge once. Um, you can see when you look at the bridges back there how they are slightly wider than they really need to be. There was a XC2C unit passing through. With a Great Western unit behind there, class 387s. So yeah, this would have all been broad gauge and the Henley branch would have been broad gauge. It was one of the last railways built to broad gauge, but it did run for a number of years as a broad gauge service. A little um, 242 tank engine would have worked the first train to Henley. We'll talk about some of the immediate, um, intermediate stations on the way because they weren't there from the opening day. Twyford is a really rather pleasant station. The footbridge, although it looks um, blends in quite nicely, it's not the original. I remember when they took down the original one and replaced with the current one to provide lift access. It's a nice station in that there's no ticket barriers. You can just walk in and out. Um, quite a lot of people use the footbridge to get to that part of Twyford over there. I remember there used to be an HST that used to stop here some evenings. So I used to sometimes come and see that. That's platform four. Elizabeth line. And this is the Henley branch on platform five. So yeah, the Elizabeth line now serves here. Although they only go to London Paddington, they don't yet run through the tunnels to Abbey Wood. If you want to see the line to Abbey Wood, have a look at link on screen now. That's me riding the Elizabeth line on the first day. Interestingly, look at this. At each side of the cafe, the signs, they're still in the first Great Western livery, which is now known as Great Western Railway. So there we are, twice for Wargrave, Ship Lake, Henley on Thames and the Thames Path. Although this isn't specifically a video on the Thames Path, we will be doing some of the Thames Path today. So the way Branch Line Britain works, if you haven't watched the two previous episodes of Branch Line Britain, well there's an Elizabeth Line train pulling in. 345008, that's going to ready. If you haven't seen a Branch Line Britain video before, I mean it is only episode three, the way it works is I walk the Branch Line, as in I um, follow the line where I can, or as near as I can, come back on the train. It's not going to be so easy today due to the fact that there's very few public rights of way on this side of the Thames. This side of the Thames is Berkshire, the other side of the Thames is Oxfordshire, so the line's half in Berkshire, half in Oxfordshire. So crossing the Thames I cannot do on foot unless I walk all the way to Henley on Thames, so we'll, we'll get on to that bit. We get there's another 800 passing through. An unusual thing about Twyford Station is you can actually exit off the end of the platform. Um, so this is the, it's obviously the Henley branch, then there's the connecting line between the main line, and you can actually walk down here and cross this Barrow Crossing. It's one of very few places um, that, you know, you can cross a running line, but so, it's so, so few trains actually come on and off here. The line is worked by class 165s, um, which we also saw on the last branch line Britain video, which was quite a while ago when we did the Greenford branch. The 165s, they've lost their work on the main line to these trains and the 387s, but they do still work the branch lines. So, 
That's the branch line going off towards Henley. Let's go and explore some more of it. Open this. 387 passing through. So the branch train's arrived, I'm out the front of the station now. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to walk into the village centre and uh, we'll have a quick look, because I do like to point out some of the few things there is in these villages. So the train's sitting there, only sits there for about three minutes. I'm going to follow that sign there to the village centre. Let's just go and see what is in the centre of Trifle. We'll just come down Station Road and we're just coming into the centre of Twyford. Parish Church is just down there and the village centre is up here. So it's a fairly pleasant little village. I've been here a few times over the years. Usually if I'm watching trains, it's somewhere quite pleasant to stop and go for a walk afterwards, get a cup of tea. You know, there's a Waitrose, a Costa, all those usual sort of things. The only problem is you can be a bit driving through it. There's always traffic, these lights. So um, usually if I'm just passing through, I try and avoid driving through the village centre because there's various other routes you can take. But um, other than that, it's quite a pleasant village. It's even got a model shop, I noticed, which um, is always nice to see. Went in there, there's a few model trains for sale. Not that I really do more railway modelling anymore, but um, you know, for those of you who do, good to know it's here. So, we're just coming into the main crossroads now of the village centre. What I'm going to do, I'm going to continue up this road here, Wargrave Road, up towards Wargrave, which is the next um, station on line. So, we're going to I'm going to walk quite away from the railway because I can't really follow the railway to Walbridge and we'll have a look around there and then we'll continue north towards Henry. Just crossed the A4, the London to Bath Road, looking towards Bath, looking towards London. A few miles up that way is the village of Knoll Hill where there's a very interesting abandoned narrow gauge railway. If you want to know about that, have a look at the link on screen now. I'm going to follow this public bridleway past all what appears to be a load of polytunnels growing strawberries and I'll follow this way towards Wargrave. So I'm just now making my way into Wargrave village centre. Had quite a pleasant walk across the strawberry farm. I probably could have just come straight along this road um, because it, it looks like there probably was a path all the way but I hadn't been this way before. And you know I, like, I do like a good long walk. So we're just coming in a bit like Twyford and there's traffic lights um, but the village here the streets are really narrow so um, yeah, they kind of do really need them. It's a very pleasant village. We've got, I mean, it's quite nice with the travel lights. You get every now and then gaps in the cars. You can see all the flags have been up for the recently for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. So it's a very pleasant little village. The station road is actually just just down there. But I'm probably going to make my way that way down past the church, and um, I'll find my way to the station down there. So I've made my way down Station Road from the village of Wargrave towards Wargrave Station. Now, interestingly, when the line opened, the only intermediate station provided was Shipplake, which we'll see fairly soon. The Great Western Railway decided that the pleasant village which we just saw of Wargrave didn't need a railway station, but the villagers didn't agree. So, after a bit of lobbying, in 1900, the railway station opened. Here we are, here's Wargrave Station. So we're going to go and have a look. It's, um, it's got quite a lot of nice flowers and everything, looks nicely decorated, but it's not going to be as it would have originally been because, well, the line was originally broad gauge. By the time this station opened, the broad gauge had come and gone, so you could never get on a broad gauge train here. In 1896, the line was doubled. Still, no railway station here. When they eventually did open the railway station, it would have looked a bit different to than it is today little ticket machine there and a waiting shelter there would have been a full station building about here somewhere you can probably just that might even just about mark out the footprint that line in the tarmac there's that bit of concrete see 
below it seems to sit slightly higher. So we go on to the station, and um, there's not a lot here now. It's looking up towards Henley. It, she says trains to Henley. No, it says trains to Reading, Twyford, and London. So that's looking that way, back to Twyford. So somewhere there'd have been a footbridge here, and the second platform would have been along there, but that the line was singled in 1961, and it was reduced just to what it is now. Now, the interesting thing here is I said I was going to walk the line. It's a bit complicated here. It's just up there is the River Thames. If they run a replacement bus service on this line, they can't serve the stations in order. So a bus could say start at Henley, it could go to Ship Lake, but then it's got to cross the river to get to Wargrave or to get, and then to get onto Twyford. Or if it started at Twyford, it could come here, but then it'd have to go to Henley before it gets to Wargrave. That also means I can't just walk to Wargrave without going to Henley. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get on the train and go to Ship Lake, and then at Ship Lake, I'll walk down to the Thames River Bridge, which is just there. So we're on a slight bit of gradient here, getting the line up to go over the Thames, but it's about the only gradient. When I get to Ship Lake, we'll walk down, we'll have a look at the bridge. It's not the original, and then we'll follow the Thames up towards Henley. So the train just passed through heading towards Twyford. I've just found this information board here showing some heritage of the railway station. So you can have a look there, you can see what the station would have looked like when it had two platforms. That's how it looks in latter years, the DMU, and um, just one platform. But you can see the station building before it was demolished. There's the bridge, or the original bridge, which we're going to cross soon, but we're going to cross the replacement, that would be the original wooden bridge. And down here, get a nice view of the station with its footbridge. There's also a plan there showing how it would have been, so there'd have been a siding with the double tracks. So if we go back out into the car park, I'll explain. So, saying, as I said earlier, this is the site of the old station, ticket office and everything, there'd have been a waiting room just there, and I'm, yeah, I'm fairly sure this area here is the footprint of the station building. There'd have been a siding up there, and there'd have been a siding coming down here to unload goods facilities on and off the goods trains. But then when the line was singled, the goods trains would have been withdrawn as well. Steam did work up and down, obviously, for quite a while, till into the 60s it would have been a pannier tank with possibly one or two carriages, but then it became dieselised and they ran DMUs. Although there were, up until about mid-60s, there'd have still been some steam hauled trains through to London, usually hauled by maybe a hall or a castle class. So that would have been quite exciting. Then even fairly recently, there was always through train, a few through trains a day to London with 165s and 166s, but when the Great Western Main Line was electrified, that effectively put a stop to that. This line currently isn't electrified. There is talk of electrifying it, but whether that will happen, I don't know. It's effectively paused, but um, you know, it's, it probably will happen. It's just a case of when rather than if. The other interesting thing I always think would be, if they could run one or two through trains to London, run an 800 or an 802, because it could run on diesel and then run through to London. But as far as I'm aware, I don't think any of the Hitachi trains have ever come up this branch. So I'm just going to wait here at this pleasant, quiet station for my class 165 to take me over the river to Ship Lake. So here we are, we've just boarded the train at Wargrave. I'll be able to show you the crossing the River Thames. It's interesting that, you know, I was looking on the map just how close um, Wargrave and Ship Lake are. Although, well, the villages are actually a mile or so apart, but the Thames is in the middle, and this is the only way you can cross. So what we'll do, when we come back down to the bridge, the bridge is basically in Wargrave, and as, and as I said earlier, we are currently in Berkshire, very soon we'll be in Oxfordshire and it's a former double track bridge even though it's, it's not the original so we are going we're currently on the um, yes yeah, so this the bridge starts now but we're not actually on the Thames 
we're on the current, what would have been the up line, the down line would have been just over there. Um, so yeah, here's, there's the Thames, and if you have a look over here, you should just be able to see, as we cross the Thames itself, you can just see the posts from the original bridge, but my plan is, I don't know how much we'll be able to see, but we'll come down and walk underneath this bridge. So, here we are. We have crossed the Thames, we're now in Oxfordshire, so I'm going to walk down there, we'll have a look. We're going to very soon come into Shiplake Station, which um, is a station I've been to before. I have been to Wargrave Station in the past, and I can just feel we're slowly going down. This is, as I said, the only gradients on this line really are to cross the river. We are now approaching Shiplake. So we're coming into Shiplake. It's nice and cool on these uh, 165s, the air conditioning. Oh, there's a nice view out over there. The Thames runs, when you can see it, when there's no bushes in the way, runs along there, but we'll see all of that when we go for a walk. But yeah, the, the air conditioning does make these trains quite nice to come and sit on on a hot day. Just a way of cooling down. Another interesting thing is this train has first class accommodation. My plan was to sit there, um, but there was already people sat there. But according to real time trains, this train doesn't have first class accommodation. So it basically means if you buy a standard class ticket, you could sit in first class because um, they don't do first class on this line. Although when I went to buy the ticket, there was the option to buy a first class and it cost £10. So um, I don't know if anyone actually has bought a first class ticket from Wargrave to Shipland for £10, but personally, I think it'd be a bit of a waste of money. I think I've noticed they've put on this window, they've put sort of um, made it so you can't see out, but not on that one. I don't know why that is. If anyone does know, please do comment and tell me. So we'll get out here. It's my first time at this station. We'll have a look, we'll watch the train depart, and um, then we'll continue to set back down to the bridge and then towards Henley. So let's get out. Let's I don't the Here we are, this is a nice old station sign. We're we'll going to have a look at that in a minute. I want to watch the train go. So, when this was double line, I believe it had, it, well, it did, it's fairly obvious, it had an island platform. You can see that clearly, those houses wouldn't have been there. So, there's our train that we've just come on. The gates have gone down, so the train can now depart. You can hear the noise of the gates, so we'll watch the train go and then um, we'll go back and have a look at the station. That big uh, orange camera there, that must be to stop anyone who, who it's only a half barrier crossing, anyone who's silly enough to try and, you know, drive through, they'll be caught. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. There's our train, three car unit, sometimes it'll be a two car unit. There's another one of those cameras there. When the Henley Regatta's on, they usually run two together, so they'd run six car units because it's, um, well, especially when it's a two car train, they look a little bit lost on these long platforms. The platforms can accommodate up to six carriages. There was a station building here. I understand it burnt down well, a long time ago in the, in the late 1800s, which was a bit of a shame. So um, there's a ticket, off, a ticket machine, not a ticket office. Nice old station sign there, so Ship Lake. All the stations on this line, um, unless you count Twyford, none of them have bridges um, because basically they don't need to. It's a flat place. There's not really much of an embankment apart from what we saw to cross the Thames. This is really nice, all these um, sort of flower beds and uh, no doubt that's an old station sign. Um, so yeah, it's very easily accessible. Look at that, it's really nice. All, more stations were like this. The only thing with this is you don't get very interesting variety of trains passing through. This reminds me of how Taplow used to be. I go to Taplow station quite a lot when charter trains come through because it's a good station. It's not as good as it used to be. It now has ticket barriers, although to be fair the staff have always been very pleasant and let me on, but it's not quite how it used to be. It used to be such a pleasant station. It didn't have any trees quite this big on it, but it always had nice flower beds. I think it has got some now, but it just used to be a really nice country station. Now it's kind of become, you know, well, it's a little Elizabeth flight station. This is interesting. DMU, 30 miles an hour, but there's a 10 sign. So it basically doesn't rule out locomotive all trains coming up here. Although 
because I think it's very rare. It has happened. There have been one or two overnight charters, buffer puffer charters. They're trains that go up and down for enthusiasts, up and down all the lines. They've been done at night. That's interesting. There's a exit to the station there. Um, there also appears to be a footpath running along there beside the line. I wonder if it looks like it crosses the line up here. I wonder if that's an exit up there. Um, so it's quite a pleasant station, this bit. It's different. If they ever wanted to run more trains, they potentially could reinstate the parcel loop, although that would mean demolishing that house. I doubt they ever would, but or maybe it'd be easier to put the par a passing loop in at Wargrave. Um, I don't know if that demand would ever come. I'm intrigued to know whether they would electrify the line ever. Oh, now this is interesting. That footpath crosses there. So there's nothing to say don't exit the station here. So I'm fairly certain this is classed as an exit to the station. So I wouldn't normally do this, walk off the end of the track, but here you clearly can. And that's the platform down there. So the footpath goes that way. I think I'm gonna have to go that way to find the bridge. I'm just gonna go this way. Now I want to, I want to check. So basically no one should walk down there. But if you come along, you can enter the station here. Well, check both ways, nothing's coming. I know nothing is coming because the train went that way, but still, it's good practice to check. And then down here, we get quite a nice view of the station. Be, um, I don't know if I'm gonna have time today, but to see the train depart from here, especially if it was like an interesting train, would be quite nice. Um, be nice to run like an old, they used to run class one, two, ones. Um, I used to travel on a 121 on the Pritchard Railway branch. It'd be quite nice if they could run one of them up and down here. Talking of running specials, I think um, they did run steam up here in the 90s, a 2MT top and tail with, I think, class 37. I certainly wasn't around to see it, but I know it has been done. But I think that was when there wasn't a Sunday service on the branch, so they could do that. I shouldn't think that would ever happen now, because it's not like they can put an easy replacement bus service on. This footpath here must go out into a road. Um, so I think I'm going to, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to leave this section of the video here. I'm going to follow the road around and get one last view off the station platform. There's another exit there. So it's got three entrances and exits for a very small station. I'll come out into this road here. I'm going to walk back to the front of the station and then we'll walk down and find the bridge over the River Thames. So now about half a mile away from Ship Lake Station. I'm going down the strangest footpath ever. I'm literally walking through someone's garden. I just went across their patio, but it did say public footpath. Um, I must be getting near the Thames. Yeah, so look, footpath. This one's here then. Go up here and, oh, okay. So look, it says footpath here. I think I've got to go through into somebody else's garden. Yeah. I'm literally now in someone else's garden. I found the river, all right, but I'm in someone's garden. A bit strange. And then there's a, another sign here. It says, please shut the gate, but it says public footpath. So I go through here. Um, I'm in someone else's garden. This is the weirdest footpath I've ever been down. And there still must be some distance from the railway because I can't see it. I'm not sure where I should and shouldn't go. I'm not gonna go out there because that possibly is private. I think I have the right to walk through these gardens, but I don't think I have the right to just go wandering around them. There's actually a gardener over there. Someone's got a lot of money, lives here. Got all this money, and yet I'm allowed to just walk through their garden as I please. Um, okay, so, uh, and then through into what I suppose we can only assume is going to be someone else's garden. I hope there's no dogs running around. Um, shut the gates. So, yeah, we are now in someone else's garden. This is just weird. Anyway, we're supposed to be looking for a railway bridge. I came this way. Interestingly, despite being next to the Thames, this isn't the Thames path. The Thames path, perhaps more sensibly, runs along in front of those houses. But I saw this path on the OS map and thought I'd go this way. So I must go through here. And um, I'd say this looks more like a footpath. So that way we'll go join the road. And this way is yeah, a bit narrow. Um, more people's gardens, maybe? Uh, yeah, just when I thought I wasn't going to go through anyone else's garden, here we are. 
Um, you don't normally just go walking through people's gardens, but when footpath actually takes you that way, ah, oh, this railway bridge. Um, through another gate, what's this, the sixth or seventh person's garden I've just randomly walked through. There's the railway bridge, that's what we've come to look for. And um, as I go into yet somebody else's garden by the Thames, we can see, well back there is Ship Lake Lock. And um, so Wargrave Station really isn't far away now. Probably, you know, these houses live, their closest railway station as the crow flies is Wargrave. We're going into somebody else's garden now. <laughs> the gate didn't want to open. Oh, it opens this way. Uh, yeah, so these people whose gardens I'm just walking through, their nearest railway station is Walgrave. But they, unless they want to go, they'd have to swim or get a boat because there isn't any way to get there. They have to go to Ship Lake, like I've done. Yeah, I'm going to someone else's garden. This gate looks like it's about to fall apart. Right, um, this house is in the process of being either built or rebuilt or renovated. Not quite sure. Um, say that as I go into somebody else's garden. I have never seen such a weird footpath. Stop and have a swing, but I won't because I don't think my right to I don't think I have the right to just use the facilities in people's gardens, but I do have the right to walk through them. Now where? Okay, I mean some really expensive houses being built and they've got the railway bridge now. While I was thinking, I don't know if the people here would agree with me, but you can clearly see now how the bridge would have been double track. I'm glad this path exists because I wouldn't have been able to brought you here to show you this. Um, how really expensive those houses. Um, anyway, yeah, so it'd be quite cool if they could put the second span back and put a public footpath on it and make crossing the river easier. But I don't know if they will. So at the moment, basically, if you want to cross the river, you need to go by train. I, to my knowledge, not a ferry service. Is this gate going to take me to someone else's garden? Um, no wonder I'm bumped into anyone else's. Anyway, um, with the main objectives being achieved by coming this way, we found the bridge. You can see the spans which would have carried the second track. So they've actually, you know, the, um, the abutments are still there, but the bridge itself isn't. Oh, look at that, that's quite cool. So the bridge extends quite a long way above the floodplain, as well as just underneath the Thames, or over the Thames rather. And then, oh, at this point, the Thames path rejoins. So that path going that way, that's the Thames path. And then the Thames path goes this way. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna follow the Thames path around um, and then we'll, we're actually gonna end up back crossing the railway line and end up at Ship Lake again before we can continue any further on the Thames path. Incidentally, one day, my intention is, I don't know when, I say this every year, I want to walk the whole of the Thames path and make a video. Oh, and just to prove my point, look, over there, uh, well, the camera's probably not picking out, but just there, is the tower of Wargrave Parish Church. So basically, we're much, much nearer to Wargrave than we are Ship Lake. I can see boats right over there around that field. So I'm going to follow the path round and I'm going to end up back at Ship Lake before we continue walking north to Henley. I'm now walking along a rather pleasant section of the Thames Path. I'm in Oxfordshire, but over there is in Berkshire. Now, um, I don't want to talk too much about the Thames itself because that is for when I do the Thames Path, but because one of the main subjects of today's video has been crossing the Thames, there's something rather interesting here. The Thames Path comes to a bit of an abrupt end, or at least running beside the Thames it does, and it heads inland back towards the railway. There used to be a ferry here called the Lashbrook Ferry. I think that cottage over there is built on the site Ferry Cottage. It ran until about 1953 because landowners, just as they are today, wouldn't let people cross their land. So there was no, um, no, no towpath. So you'd go across on a ferry and then continue on that side for about a mile or so. And then you get to Bolney Ferry. Um, there's an old map here. So we've basically just come along here. You could have crossed there, continued on that side and then gone back onto this side. But it doesn't look as though there's a path. There's just more expensive houses. I'm now going to continue inland. I can just see another railway bridge there, so we'll go and have a look at that when we get a bit closer. I've now come away from the Thames on the Thames path, and this is that bridge I could see in the distance. It's a rather low bridge um, to walk under. I'm wondering if I'm going to have to duck to go under it. This. I think the reason the railway is on this bridge here is to carry it above a floodplain. You can see there's watercourse just there. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a low bridge. 
It's not the lowest bridge I've ever been under. If you want to see that bridge, have a look at the link on screen now. Oh, and the abutments again clearly show how it was once a double track bridge. But yeah, quite a low bridge to walk under. And the Thames path now seems to be going in the wrong direction. You can just see through the hedge into a private garden where I can't just go walking through a water course. So I expect if I was to come down here after a lot of heavy rain, I might need waders. Um, so I'm quite glad it's a nice summer sunny day. This path now will take me back around some way. It seems to be a very literally round the houses route back to Ship Lake, but that's the way it's going to go. And have a look here to see the end abutment for that bridge. And again, you can clearly see it was built for double track. I'm going to follow a path round back to Ship Lake. Just stopped for a pint in the Lake Seville Arms. Um, which was very pleasant after walking in the hot sunshine along the Thames path. It's, it's now cooled down a bit as we get into the evening. We're just passing Shiplake Station again. I've still got a few more miles to walk though, because um, I've got to walk all the way to Henley. This is actually the Thames path, although we are a quarter of a mile or so away from the Thames. As we've mentioned before, the Thames path comes inland. Back to the idea of um, they have to reinstate the, car, uh, the passing loop. These cars would have to move, this part of the car park would go, that house would have to be demolished, and then you'd have a parcel again. I don't think that'll ever happen. So I expect when the line was singled, British Rail would have sold off that bit of land and that house was built. Doesn't appear to be a train coming, so we'll cross the line, giving us a view of Shiplake Station. And that way's looking towards Henley. We get to here, there's um, a sign saying Thames Park. So, Thames Park. Thames path down there. So we're going to go down here and look for the Thames and continue towards Henley. Well, as I walk along the Thames path now, I've come to a rather unexpected surprise railway line, a miniature railway line. It's clearly in someone's garden, but seeing as I can see it from the footpath, I thought I'd show it. I wonder if they have any open days. I mean, if they don't, that's fine. But look, there's a junction going off there through the roses. It looks very exciting. So, um, yeah, um, it could have. I'm sort of tempted to hang around and see if a train comes along, but I somehow don't think they would. But yeah, but you don't always expect to find these things, and there's a lot of private miniature railways hidden away that you'd never know. But as soon as this one, you can literally see it over the, I'll show the train. I was on the Henley branch over the fence. I thought I'd show it. I'm going to continue now. The railway line disappears away down there. Yeah, I can hear a train, that's clearly on the main line. Um, but yeah, I'd love to ride it. But I don't know if they ever do any public open days. Goes off, off, disappears off down there into the gardens. I'm going to continue this way and find the River Thames. I've now rejoined the River Thames. The River Thames is just here, so I'm following the Thames path that way towards Henley. Let's have a quick look at the Thames. That's interesting. What's on the other side? There's like a fairly modern flint wall. It looks like a tunnel just going into the hill. I'm intrigued to know what that's about. But anyway, this is the River Thames. I'm going to continue following it downstream towards Henley. So here we are. We have now reached Henley on Thames. Very pleasant, affluent town, which this branch line serves. It's um, interesting to, to note that the line, there was talk of extending it beyond Henley on Thames to Marlow. That was no doubt provided the station at Hurley and then connected up with the Marlow branch but quite how it would have worked I'm not sure because it'd be easier to build a railway on the other side of the Thames but the Marlow branch is also or Marlow station I should say is on this side of the Thames the Marlow branch does also cross the Thames but um, the Marlow branch is a video for another day and of course the Marlow branch is not fully intact um, the line as far as Bourne End is the stub of a through route there's a petrol station for boats there or maybe diesel the big pleasure boat there so um that's a one of those what might have been the line being extended from here to marlow the main um, reason it didn't happen is that the leander rowing club not leander the steam loco but the leander rowing club of henley on thames vehemently opposed the idea of the line it's a nice boat there running through to marlow so if you want to go to marlow best way now is to get a bus or follow the thames path or maybe get a boat if there is one that runs between the two 
this is Station Road here. In fact, I think the railway station is just around here. So while we're here, nice old Porsche there. Not really my form of classic car, but nice to see a classic car. And um, yeah, so we are close to the railway station. Right, I say close. It's, it's just up here. We have a little look at Henley on Thames. I'm probably going to go and find a pub and have dinner, I think, um, before I get the train back to Twyford. Just going along here and um, the station. The station, so the line basically survives to its full length. I think Henley on Thames station has been slightly altered over the years. It would have once had one of Brunel's wooden train sheds, which not many survived. There's one at Froome and um, an episode, future episode of Branch Line Bridge, and perhaps we'll do the Chalsing Wallingford Railway. They've got the old train shed from Maidenhead, which again links us back to the Marlow branch. As I said, Marlow branch is a video for, for another day. I think we're very close to the station now. It's been a while since I last came here. I came to the Royal Regatta a few years ago, came on the train, the train was very busy, and a friend of mine was running a stall there, so we camped here, it was quite fun. And the next day I got the bus to High Wycombe and went home that way. Uh, yeah, the railway station is just around here. So I think the railway station would have been here more, or at least the buffers would have been here. You can see the modern station building and ticket office which dates from about 1985 there is something left to see of um, the original station here well here where this modern office stroke flats are would have been the original wooden ch train shed which i just mentioned and then as i said the line was cut back so i can't recall it it's a huge line just slightly pruned a little bit by yeah not even 100 yards that's Henley on thames station ticket office so we're going to go and have a look I'll just see the end of the awnings. Talk about that in a minute. Can we walk through the ticket office or is it closed? It looks closed, yeah. So we'll go around here and have a look at the station. There must be a way in here. This may have probably been a good yard, or at least part of this would have been a good yard once. Oh, yeah, we accessed the station here. So, as you can see, part of the original awnings survived, and um, probably the only overhead structure left on the whole branch but the track itself ends there we walk down here we'll walk, have a look so i think there'd have been two platforms so there'd have been another platform there and as i said the station was further back that way so we're effectively standing on what was once a bay platform but the inevitable car park has taken over the other platform and the goods yard so it's quite a long platform but it's probably only really during regatta days that you get anything longer than three cars come up here. It'd be interesting to see what happens once the 165s gradually disappear. There's talk of battery powered D stock trains or D trains on the Greenford branch, possibly the Marlow branch. Um, whether it will be electrified in the future, only time will tell. We'll have to wait and see. The Marlow branch, I keep going back to the Marlow branch, we'll do a video on the Marlow branch. The Marlow branch won't be electrified or at least not in full for the time being, due to the fact you can only run a two-car train to Marlow, but that is for when we do Marlow branch. I want to walk to the end of the platform, just so I've been there. It's a zone six, so if there is a, that would be probably about the length of two 165s. You probably could run more than, probably could run three uh, 165s to create a nine-car train, but um, it wouldn't fit in the platforms at the other stations. In, another interesting thing that might happen is the, what were class 319s now? What are they? Um, they're electric and diesel. I cannot think what class number, but it's coming on screen now. They potentially could run up here. The reason I want this walk to the end is because this, I think, must have been an old station sign. St. Henley on Thames, which seems to have lost its station signage. And yeah, not much better on that side. Someone needs to come along and paint Henley on Thames. Another interesting thing about this station is. When it was first opened, it was just plain Henley. The reason they needed to add the on Thames suffix was when Henley and Arden up in Warwickshire opened. And then, you know, say if you were in London and you said, could I have a ticket to Henley, please? They might not know which Henley you meant. So they had to, you had to be more specific whether you wanted Henley on Thames or Henley and Arden. Anyway, I'm going to wait for the train to come to take me back to Swyford now.
Just departing ship plate now. I'm sitting in declassified first class. It's quite pleasant. Don't get any perks or anything, but you know, just slightly more comfortable seat. And seeing as I can do it on a standard gauge ticket. Oh look, that's that low bridge we went under um, four miles as well. It's quite fun now when you ride back, when you walk to line, you sort of look out and think, oh yeah, I was there earlier, I remember seeing that. And then soon we come up to that really rather amusing footpath that went through everyone's garden. And then over there, you might be able to see, there's the field we walked along, obscured by trees now, and the river is over there. We're going to shortly cross the river. So again, we are now where, I suppose, what's an up train on the up line. You can clearly see the formation where the down line would have been. It'd be interesting if they ever had extended it through to Marlow, if it ever had, you know, survived to this day, but we'll never know. There's the... The bridge, we're on the bridge now, but as I said, it crosses a few bits of land first, and then yeah, that down there, there's the gardens which we walk through. There's the river, and now we're back into Berkshire. I'm going to continue enjoying the journey back to Twyford where the video will finish. So here we are back at Twyford. I've had a good time exploring the Henley Branch and riding on this class 165. If you want to ride the Henley Branch yourself, it's very easy to get to. The Elizabeth Line now serves Twyford. Although the station is still managed by Great Western Railway, but you can clearly get here easily from London, or Reading for that matter, on an Elizabeth Line train. So why not come on a train to Twyford, catch the little branch line train up to Henley, maybe get out of Wargrave or Shiplake and explore those stations or walk along the Thames path. It's a very pleasant, obviously it's a very flat walk, so it's not too strenuous. So hope you enjoyed this video from the Bay Platform at Twyford Station. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Goodbye.